Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Mark Rowell. All right, it's still another hot day here in Waco. Uh, it's been this way basically in Central Texas all summer. Uh, but I think we're finally gonna get to a point in the next couple days where we're gonna see a break in the weather. Starting Thursday, there's supposed to be a significant drop in temperature and then we're gonna see rain for at least a foreseeable future, or at least a chance of rain. So that's a good thing. But I gotta do so I need to do something today and uh, I think I'm gonna go out and actually brave the weather a little bit. There's an area kind of approaching downtown called Castle Heights. Uh, one of the biggest uh, features in the area is the Cottonland Castle, which I've visited a few times. But I've been doing a, re a little reading on the area, and apparently in about the 1920s, uh, they started building this area. It was just an empty hill prior to that, and they started building some really big, beautiful houses in this area. And so we're going to go look at some of those houses, wander around, and marvel at some of the architecture in the area. Uh, like I said, most of these houses are about 100 years old and they really were kind of designed for the more affluent people in the city of Waco at that point. And we'll talk a little bit about the history of the area, but this should be pretty fun. We're gonna go see some beautiful houses, let's go. So this is the Cottonland Castle. Of course, we've visited this place a couple times. Uh, it's pretty well known at this point that Chip and Joanna Gaines have purchased this place and are in the process of attempting to restore it. Now, uh, apparently they're getting pretty close because I think they're even offering tours in here. It, uh, definitely got all the lights on inside. Looks really nice in there right now. So I think they've done some good work, brought, brought this place back to its uh, former glory, but that's not really what we're here to talk about. What we're here to talk about today are some of the houses over here. This is Castle Heights. And basically it starts from Austin here at Ca and Castle, which is actually uh, just right off of 33rd Street, which is right over there. And it's all of these houses back here. And basically when these houses were built, this was in the 1920s, uh, this was kind of the end of Waco. Uh, this is as far out as the town had spread. And a group of developers just decided they wanted to build some very nice upscale houses that were, you know, of interesting architecture and uh, on nice big lots and kind of, you know, places for uh, the business people in Waco in those days to really enjoy, you know, living, uh, you know, they're getting, being able to get away from the city and uh, still be close enough to everything. And so there's a lot of really beautiful architecture back here. Uh, and uh, we're just gonna kind of wander around and look at some of this stuff. Some very nice historic houses back here. Now they uh, zoned the whole area in such a way that there was no businesses, there was, you know, a certain, you know, you couldn't subdivide these plots up into smaller houses. They wanted to kind of keep this an upscale area. And uh, like I said, I knew that this area was here, but I've never really wandered around in it. Look at that one. Beautiful houses. Three car garage. Nice little sitting room there. Enclosed porch. You know, they aren't huge, they aren't all huge mansions, but they're all on big plots of land. And that was one of the things that really kind of attracted some of the earlier residents to the area. Now, initially, they incorporated it as their own little township in the area, and eventually the city of Waco tried to annex it, and there were lots of lawsuits and, and the likes, but ultimately, uh, Waco prevailed, and this became part of Waco. Look at that one. I love all the windows on this one. A lot of natural light coming into this house. 
Now, the, this neighborhood is still a very affluent area. It's one of the more desirable areas to live in Waco. Not that I'm complaining about where I live. I, where I live is very nice too, but I love kind of the historic nature of some of these houses. Like that house, how it, it just seems really unassuming in the front, but it's got a big, it kind of, kind of just surrounds the whole yard and goes all over the place in here. Another one of the kind of neat things about these houses is it isn't just a bunch of cookie cutter houses. Every one of them looks like it was uh, custom built by probably the owner. That's another one of the things I mentioned here is a lot of uh, curvy streets and little islands like that. Check that island out in the middle there. Oh yeah, we got a little historical plaque here. This historic Waco neighborhood exhibits distinctive design features W.T. Herrick and W.L. Wallet pl uh, plated castle heights in in 1923, naming it for nearby Cottonland Castle and its elevation above the commercial district. Notable elements include curb streets, traffic circles, and excellent local examples of architecture, architectural revival styles such as Tudor, Colonial, Georgian, Classical, and Mediterranean. For six years, Castle Heights was an independent village voting to incorporate in 1939. The city of Waco annexed the area in December 45, and the, cohesion, the cohesive collection of early and mid 20th century homes reflects a break with the existing urban grid and links Castle Heights to national trends of suburban planning and development. Castle Heights Historic District, roughly bounded by Waco Drive, Oriental Road, Franklin Avenue, and 39th Street. Oh yeah, look at that beautiful house. can hear the squirrels in the trees. They are not happy with me right now. I am invading their territory. Doing a little work on this one here. Some, sometimes one of the cool things, uh, people come in here and they buy up these old historic houses and then fix them up like new. And I love that we got uh, areas that are preserving history like that. Just little quirky designs, I love it. I think I'd have fun with this house on Halloween. But these plots go back a long ways. That's kind of cool about stuff like this. That's something I appreciate in general about Waco because uh, when I grew up in California, you know, we had posted stamp backyards. 
You know, my, my parents had a decent sized backyard in their house in California. I had a decent sized backyard in my house in California, but it's nothing compared to what I have here. Apparently one of the selling points on this is that it was far enough outside of the city that you didn't really have all the hustle and bustle and noise of the city, but it was close enough that it had all the amenities. It had the water, it had the gas, it had the electricity, it had the sewer lines. That was all designed from the beginning. Really peaceful area. It is hot here though, holy cow. Look at that house. See, you'd never see a house like that in California. Look at the brickwork up on the second level up there. Like every one of the little sections is a little different. Beautiful house. That was one of the things they mentioned too. Some of the houses are just really minimalist. That's kind of a good example of that. You can really see kind of how narrow this area is because that's uh, Franklin Street out there, the major street you see out there. And ahead of us, the next major street up there is Waco. And so that's basically the end of the, uh, of the whole area. So we've already walked from one end to the other. And now we're going to kind of, you know, there's like two more streets that go through uh, Castle Heights. And uh, we're basically just going to kind of take a look at them and work our way back to where we started. Nice big house there. Single story house, corner lot. Oh, I see a big bear over here. That's awesome. Got to introduce him to uh, Darwin the gorilla, which is behind us just a couple blocks. I've never even seen this guy here. I wonder if he was carved. It looks like he's uh, standing on a uh, on a tree on a tree stump. I wonder if they carved him in spot in in where he is. It looks like he might be. He might have been carved right in place. That's great. Beautiful house, too. As if that one's a, a real dump, right? Beautiful houses back here, holy cow. See what I mean by different architectural styles? I love all the vegetation in this house here. Seems to me one of the books I've uh, read uh, has this house in it. Seems to me I've seen this house before. This might be one one of the houses that is a particular historic house in this in this area. Look at that plop though. Beautiful house. I think we're gonna go this way. And they have cicadas here too. On kind of an unrelated note, I think it's funny how the cicadas uh, kind of all 
start uh, start singing when one of them does. One of them will start making noise, and then all of a sudden you'll hear them all over the trees, and it'll be like just this wave of sound. I like the landscaping of this one. This guy's got some lantania in his front yard. That's what that stuff grows up to be eventually. This neighbor has just kind of a, an open concept backyard. No real fence, it's just a lot of uh, beautiful stuff back here. I like the idea of the little balcony on the second level there. Look at the size of this lot. Little guest house in the back. Some of these are a little bit run down. This is one that could definitely need a little work. Looks like that porch is, uh, is on the verge of collapsing. It's sagging in the middle there. You can lease that one. I would think if I was gonna take on a home like this, so I'd wanna buy it so that I could, you know, feel more comfortable turning it into what I wanna be, want it, want it to be. You know, it's not, not a lot of fun to put money into a house that isn't yours. That's kind of a pretty house. I like all the windows. That one's kind of nice too. I think some of the, some of these houses here, as we're getting further towards Waco Drive, which is just over there, I think maybe we kind of move out of the Castle Heights area a little bit. This might not even be considered part of it, it's sort of influenced by it, but I think it probably ends on this side. Because it seems like the houses over here are a lot more elaborate than, than some of the ones over here. Not that I'm saying that the ones over here aren't nice also, but Look at the size of that yard. Big corner lot. Goes back there about 50 yards. I think one of the things that makes some of these houses really nice is when there's a lot of big old trees in the front yard. 
makes it seem a little bit more inviting, especially on like really hot days like this. Almost feels like it'd be really nice to be hanging out under these trees right now. Look at that place. I think we kind of saw that from another angle at the beginning because we kind of started off walking down that street, but holy cow, look at that place. That is one big house. So I think that uh, concludes our little tour of the Castle Heights neighborhood. Like I said, it was all named for this building right here, the Cottonland Castle, but uh, a lot of beautiful houses back here and I'm actually kind of glad I checked this out. I've been up and down Austin Street, which is this street right here that I'm in front of a few times, but I've never actually gone that way and uh, looked at some of the houses and that's where the real beautiful stuff is. So I enjoyed doing this. I hope you enjoyed uh, going out and seeing some of the beautiful areas in historic Waco. And I think that's all I have for today. So thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.